Chapter 12 Robotnik gritted his teeth and stormed back and forth inside the newly arrived mobile lab. It had been six hours since that blasted hedgehog fried his last series of botniks, and though his drone-enhanced truck doubtfully found him despite his total lack of functioning electrical equipment, he still lost too much time to the Smarly Green Hills dolt. A curse on those commerce. These small town hicks disgusted him. The local yokels, the moms and pops, they were forcing him to think the impossible. In order to capture that creature, Robotnik would have to do more than outthink them. He ha he'd have to overpower them. All that was left was a sneer display of brute force. Doctor, do we have a calculation on their destination net yet? Agent Stone asked, poking his head in Robotnik's high-tech sanctum. Their obvious endgame is San Francisco, the, uh, the doctor hissed in reply. Beyond that, inclusive. Amazing that the two of them had been able to stay one step ahead of us the whole time. Stone moaned to himself, a telltale sign of penetration thought. You know, Stone... I won't miss you when you're gone, Robotnik said with a sneer, and then launched into his manifesto. Humans are unreliable and stupid. Space hedgehogs are, un are likely more so. I care very little about either of them or their so-called plans. My machines are diligent, relentless. They mean everything to me, and they will not fail me. You, on the other hand, have one last chance not to fail me. Now bring me what I require and to get my juices flowing. The ancient ran out, leaving Robotnik alone with the glory of his own on mind. The humming of his flawless machines and the mystery of the quill. In a sealed glass case, the piece of the hedgehog those twits had left behind glowed. A sang glow that had hit lit when the inside door won its battle van when that creature zapped every electric fuse within 40 miles. Now it was time to understand what they meant. Robotnik flipped the switch on his stereo and a CD drum machine rhythm pollution out of the speakers. Funky bass licks clicked, filled the air, and the doctor went to work wiring every piece of triangulating tech he had to the blue quill. His eyes went wild with encyclopedication as his screen spun to life, feeding him data, and his feet took fight in sync with the jams. Dance, glorious this movement to the programmed robotic soul of the stereo. Sealed in his workshop, Robotnik could finally shut out the disgusting, breathing sounds of his fellow humans and be at the one with his pelvic thrusts. The more he stared into the chaotic energy of this hedgehog, the more Robotnik became obsessed with the potential of harnessing its disorder. What kind of power source he could convert the whole world into a robot revolution. Above the captured quill, an energy meter revved up its intensity. Green to yellow to red in seconds. As every alarm began ringing in time, Robotnik Pure funky breakdown. Yes, he cheered. As the distinctive energy signature of the hedgehog fed its data into his computer. Yes, fingerprint that blue freak and bring him to Papa. Swack, the door of the lab opened up and the shadow of Agent Stone fell over Robotnik. Mid thrust, he snapped the stereo off in a swift move and composed himself. He set the stereo off in a swift and composed himself. Stone suspected nothing amiss. He was certain. Um, shall tea latte with skim milk? Extra hot, just the way you like it, the agent said. No phone? No phone. Robotnik sipped his caffeine to comfort and licked his lips. Ready the prototype, Agent Stone, and get my flight suit. We're back on the trail. Chapter 13 Tom and Sonic rattled to San Francisco in the late afternoon. How they ever made it, the policemen couldn't figure it out. But they were just blocks from the place Maddie was staying in. And if he could find a way to explain to her what the heck was going on, he might have a chance at saving the hedgehog and himself in the process. 
Tom knocked frantically on the door to the apartment. And when Maddie answered, he hurried with a blanketed bundle close to his chest. Hi, baby cool place. He rushed in with a nervous smile. Do you carry, like, cat smelling salts when you go on trips? Tom, what happened to you? Are you bleeding? Come on. He felt his forehead and rubbed off the grime and sweat and blood. Come on. Oh, that? Yeah. That's either from the broken window or the robot B thing. It's fine. Anyway, cat smelling salts or like smelling salts for something slighter, bigger than a cat. Maddie furrowed her brow oh, but pulled a tiny bottle from her first aid kit. They don't like smelling salts for cats, but I have human smelling salts, she said, and shot her husband in a look. What's it for? Tom laid the blanket down and unwrapped Sonic. He had been slowly fading since he shot Robotnik set up. And now the hedgehog's breathing was growing more and more shallow. Manny's eyes widened and then darted back and forth over the animal's frame, immediately shifting into doctor mode. He's a hedgehog. Or sure he says, Tom said, smiling as wife's take charge attitude. It talks almost constantly. Manny put a hand on its chest and two fingers on its neck. His pulse is racing. That might be normal for him, actually, but you've got to help him. He isn't usually this set cake. In fact, he never is. I don't know his psychology, but he doesn't seem to have any broken bones. He's just really banged up, she said. And in a matter of minutes, she cleaned and dressed Sonic's wounds. Maybe took a deep breath to settle herself and then popped the cap of the smelling salts right under the animal's nose. Gotta go fast, Sonic shouted as his eyes snapped open and they spun around the room. The blue blur ricocheted off the ceiling and the fridge with a clamor and then came to the rest of the top of the bookshelf. His breathing never slowed. Donut Lord. Oh, and hello. His sidled up to next to the Maddie's leg. And she just, she j- jumped just a hair. It's presently, right? Good dude that you got here. It's Maddie, buddy. What is it with your, you and food? Asked Tom. More importantly, are you okay? Sonic bounced on his heels. Feels like everything's here, but I'll be in better shape when we got those rings in hand. Tom, can I please talk to you? Manny said, her eyes never leaving Sonic. Hedgehog, you stay here. Try to rest. Sure thing. I'm great at resting. I'm rest faster than anybody, he said, adding. And it's Sonic the Hedgehog. Manny led Tom out of the room. Okay, first of all, can we take a moment to acknowledge how under control I've been? I didn't freak out. Totally calm, she said, and held out her fist. He bumped it gently. Secondly, what the heck is going on? Is that thing an alien? So you know how crazy Carl is always going on about the, the blue devil? That's him? He's real? Then he touched her temple and processed it all. What's he doing here? What are you doing here? Well, remember how I told you the raccoons were back? I kind of sort of shot our blue friend with a truck gun. You did not. It's hard to explain, but it's crazy important that he needs to get to the Transamerican building. I promised to take him, Tom said. He took her by the shoulders and looked deep into her eyes. I'm still unsure of all the details, but we got a spook on us that's just a shade away from being a Looney Tune. And more than anything, I trust this little guy. I promised him I'd get him to safety. Manny's eyes raised of a concern at her husband. But it only took a moment until she was back in problem-solving mode. I have got a million questions, but I get it. This is the job. Helping people is what good policemen do. It's what you're doing. She bit her lip. Blue alien hedgehogs still count as people, don't they? I think so. I don't deserve you. You know that? Tom said, and then kissed her before they headed out. Sonic stood in the middle of the room, a toe tapping like a drum roll. What took you guys so long, he said. Let's go climb a building. 
The Transamerica building rose up in the heart of San Francisco's final district. Tom was certain from that from from its pyramid shaped top. You could see everything from the Mission District to the Golden Gate Bridge out across the water. But after Sonic sprinted up to the side of the skyscraper at top speed, the hedgehog said the one thing that was out of reach was his bag of rings. The prize had warped on the section of roof fenced off on the ledge. So the only way to get it was by going inside. It's surprising how much people would get out of your way when you flash a badge. Even an out-of-state one, Tom said, as the elevator beeped through dozens of floors. How long do you think they are before they call in their, my future co- co-workers? Let's hope it's long enough, said Maddie. Don't worry, I'll get him where he needs to go, and then the SFPD can background check me there in the heart's is content. Because he'll go back to being a figment of Crazy Carl's imagination. Hey, this figment can hear you, you know. Sonic called from inside of the duffel bag. A woman next to them turned in horror. Do you have your Do you have your child in that bag? No, said Tom. I mean, yes, it's, it's a child, but it's not mine. The woman fled at the next floor. They got off on the top floor and climbed the stairwell to the roof access. Sonic gagged his way out of the drag dramatically. It smells like right guard and old ham sandwich in there, he said, coughing. What do you do to your body, man? Listen, pal, Tom stuck the hedgehog at the door. Are you sure you're ready for this? Back on the highway? What was with that crazy lightning display? I don't know. It's only happened one other time at the baseball field. The blackout? What were you doing then? Just playing baseball, Sonic said. He hesitated, then added, Okay, there might have been some light crying involved. Tom smiled. Emotions are powerful things, Sonic. Humans struggle with them all the the time, but you don't have to struggle alone. You don't have to bottle it all up. You don't know what it's like when when I let all that chaos out of me, he said. I've never seen humans shoot lightning out of their butts. Yeah, me neither, Tom said with a laugh. But wherever you go, or whatever, or whatever you do, you're not just meant for breaking stuff. Leaving Earth, leaving Green Hills behind, that's not you ending something. You can build something good from it, too. Tom didn't want to send Sonic off with a little guy feeling bad about himself. He was going to be a better cop and a better person for having called this troublemaker for his friend. And he told Sonic that. Thanks, Tom, said the hedgehog. And thanks for saving my life. They hugged. And then Tom opened the door to the roof. The rain shone right bright in the sun. And as Sonic walked toward them, he began to shimmer with blue energy too. His nervousness was electric. Sonic pulled the bag out of his sheltered spot. He held one rain in front of him toward the open sky. Think of where I want it to be and the rain will do the rest. The golden circle in front of him began to glow. A swarm of drones burst up over the ledge of the building, scattering glass and rubble across the roof. Their high-pitched tongue rang in Tom's ears as it was joined by a hum of a rocket. A massive, egg-shaped drone loomed up above them. No, it wasn't a drone. It was a ship of some kind. A spear of blades and bombs with Robotnik wearing the, co- the control harness. Don't leave about saying goodbye, Hedgehog, the mad scientist cackled. Not when I find myself so attracted to you. The spook was in full supervillain mode. His red jacket floated in there like a vampire's cape. Tom stepped between Robotnik and Maddie and steeled himself for a fight. Sonic, I've got things here. You just run. I'm not running away anymore, Sonic called. Instead, the hedgehog turned and ran straight at Manny and Tom as hard as he could. I'm sorry, he cried. And then he pushed them over the skyscraper's ledge. Chapter 14 Well, I was not expecting that, Robotnik said as Tommy and Maddie dropped out of sight. 
Sonic spun around and faced his tormentor with power, cracking across his quills. He only had one chance to make this work. It was a moonshot of William Tell, a blindfolded bullseye attempt in the hailstorm. And he had to do it faster than anything he ever tried in his whole life. You want to feel the power of the real chaos so bad? Sonic taunted. You'll have to catch me first, you butt Nick. Name calling hurts. You pelinant sack of spikes. And challenge accepted. Robotnik slapped at his controls of fury. And the spinning cloud of mini drones twisting in the air towards Sonic like a slithering technical. Sonic launched himself in the air. And suddenly he could see everything in fine detail. He had sensed it at the roadhouse too. But he was having too much fun then to understand what was happening. All the madness, the mayhem, the pure chaos of the fight slowed down in his mind. And he could see every motion of Robotnik's mindless badniks. With a light step, Sonic ran up to the line of drones and into the air like a kid skipping across rocks in a creek. His sneakers pushed up the boots and sent him spinning right underneath the egg's bulky body. The bag of rings hung loosely in his hand as Sonic spiraled out and ran down the length of the building. He was some kind of hyperspeed now, traveling at a pace outside the boundaries of reality. Oh man, no one's going to be able to hear my jokes now, Sonic said as his feet slapped out into the cracks of windows of the building. At least I'm used to talking to myself. As the cityscape blurred around him, Sonic caught a, a glimpse of Robotnik's Ed Pod flying down the Transamerica building, trying to catch him. Fat chance! That thing was a drag, an anchor, a dead weight. But then Sonic caught a glimmer of something in the corner of his eyes. It was blue. Robotnik had pulled up a glass case containing Sonic's lost quill. And with a click, he activated the quill as a chaos power battery. The egg pod shuddered with a reactive spark. And blue energy started coursing through the entire machine. Robotnik included. Shivers of electricity surged through its mustache, and the creep sped up not quite the sign of hyperspeed, but close enough. Don't run off now, Hedgehog. It can only hurt worse if you do. Don't go too fast, Robotnik. You're bound to hit the wall, Sonic yelled, as he cut back and ran around the corner of the building. He headed for the ground as Robotnik's cloud of metal clashed with the glass, sending stars flying to the street below. Sonic pumped a fist in the air at the sound. He was home free now, until the egg pod's missile blasted off. A trio of rocket-propelled explosives curved around the building hot on Sonic's heels. He leaned harder into the run, pockets of glass shattering with each footfall. He could feel the rocket's heat behind him. Sonic needed speed, crazy, mega, super speed. He began twisting around and around the building, covering the skyscraper in a net of electric blue lines. With a zig, he, ha he led one missile astray, and it careened into the waters of the bay. Sonic spun around and ran head-on at another. Then, with a jump, he leaped over its nose, tapped a toe on, his, on its tail fin, and shot it far into the sky, where it burst like a fiery balloon. The last missile caught up to him at the top of the building, and Sonic led it straight toward Robotnik. You think I can't see you? The doctor cried with wild eyes. With this power, I can see everything. I'll be able to destroy all that it is worthless in this world. Everything will be laid to waste by the Botniks, and I will rebuild a flawless world as its god. Speedy delivery for the godhead, Sonic called, and jumped aside as the missile collided with the cloud of many drones. The drone shattered to ash across the sky, but the force of the explosion kicked Sonic off his feet. He fell to see Robotnik holding firm in his egg pod. He's got the power of chaos now, Sonic says he dropped through the air in free fall. I can't leave him with a drop of that, that power. The street below rushed up to Sonic's face, but he grabbed a loose rein and called out, You want power, Robotnik? You've never seen power like this. The rain opened up to a portal in the ground, and Sonic fell through, building back up to hyperspeed. The doctor screamed as he flew down after him. What are those? What are you hiding from me, you logical hunk of meat? 
Sonic tore a path through new ground, and on the other side of the portal stood a sight. He only ever beheld the poster on its cave wall. The Eiffel Tower. The ring had delivered into Paris. Sonic sped through the streets of the haze of blue energy and sampled Paris's life as much as he could in the seconds he was there. He inhaled a loaf of French bread to curb up, downed a dozen shots of coffee for a caffeine boost, and slapped a bear on his head for style. Ooh la la, he called, and whipped the hat off the slap my body in the face. The egg pod was carrying wildly, never as fast as, or as pierced as Sonic was in the control of his powers. Come on and follow the leader. Sonic sped up the sides of the Eiffel Tower and left a streak of flames behind him. As its expex, he looked out over the great city and said goodbye. Robotnik rocketed up after him before Sonic could reach him. Zap! Another ring warp, and the pair fell on top of the Great Wall of China. Sonic crouched low and speared down the length of the ancient structure. Robotnik swung in the air behind him. But no matter how many missiles the egg pod shot off, they were all anticipated by the waves of blue energy spiking off Sonic's body. Sonic reached into his bag, and he saw that there were only three lanes left. Gotta make count, he said as he had thought of the next place. A ring warp sent him up into a cloud of thick desert sand, most of it kicked up by Sonic's smoking feet. In the distance, the pyramids of Giza tore him like alien arrows. Sonic spun into a super-fast ball, and the lightning he discharged which turned sand to chunks of glass as he zoomed toward the tallest Egyptian pyramid. There's nowhere you can run from me, cried Robotnik. His eyes mad with electric power. I'll destroy everyone and everything to my path to get you, hedgehog. A final missile launched from Robotnik's Ed Pod and bore down on him. Sonnet looked up from the length of the pyramid, knowing another second wasted could mean his destruction. It was a good run while it lasted, he said, and tossed his second to last ring in the air. Fire and smoke poured through the other end of the ring portal, and Sonic collided with the ground in the heart of Green Hills, Town Square. The rain bag bounced off into the, into the gutter. He crawled up on his knees, but the impact of the bomb had shaken him. This was his last chance, his last hope, his final destination. One way or another, it ended here. You're an astounding-looking creature. It will be fun taking you back to the lab and examining you, Robotnik said as he hovered over him triumphantly. Any last words? Guac. I like that word. Chapter 15 Tom fell flat on his back, then Manny fell flat on him. It was like a drop from a tree branch times a hundred. There's no place like home, he said with a cough. Home? Manny jumped up and surveyed Farmer Zimmer's barn. Green Green Hills, how are we here and not dead? Sonic was to toss one of his magic rings underneath us and we fell off the building, Tom said, pulling himself up. The little dude is pretty fast. But where is he? How can we help him? I don't know. He may have already walked away. But who knows what happened to Robotnik? All we can do is, is what Sonic would do. Keep moving. Despite their aches and pains, the pair headed for home in a sprint. Tom burst through the door and surveyed the damage done by Robotnik's drones after his and Sonic's Stepper's escape. It felt like weeks ago. The room was overturned, books and artwork ripped off the shelves, and Tom's map of San Francisco had been shredded to pieces. Someday soon, you're really going to have to tell me what happened to you, Maddie said over his shoulder. Tom reached down in the mess and picked up the keys in his police cruiser. The, the short version of that robot of that robot fandoms can be extremely unhealthy, he said. But at least we still have a set of wheels to take. Thanks, taxpayers. Where should we go? Manny asked. Back to San Francisco? And then in the distance they heard the sound of explosion in Green Hills. I've got a feeling we won't need to go that far, Tom said. He nodded to the car. It might be best if you get in the back. Tom hopped in and floored it. Sirens blazing, the first time he ever had an excuse to drive like that in Green Hills, police officer. Within moments, they were approaching a smoldering crater in Town Square. Robotnik's egg pod had come to rest just above the familiar outline of a spiky blue hedgehog. Do you trust me? Tom asked. Always, said Maddie. Then brace yourself. 
Tom hooked the cruiser over the curb and brought it into a high down conclusion with the egg pod. The two vehicles clanged off each other with a scrunch. And Robotnik flew from his pilot seat and onto the ground. The airbag hit Tom square in the face, but he shook it off and checked it to find Maddie. Unhurt, but squeezing the cruiser's cage, driver for dear life. Now I know what it feels like to be in the cat carrier, she said. This is professional development, really. Stay there and stay safe, Tom said, and jumped out of the crumps di di driver's seat toward the action. Wachowski, Robotnik growled as he pulled himself up. From the wreckage of the egg pie, strands of lightning were still clinging to his warped face. Who do you think you are, you simpleton? I'm the Donut Lord, chump, Tom said, and swamped his face hard, connecting with a right hook. The last to get to the chaos, lightning ripped him off the ground. Tom flipped over and landed in the dirt next to him, smiling Sonic. I knew you'd make it, the hedgehog cheered. Sorry about pushing you off a skyscraper. If you had to do it, that was the best way, I guess, Tom said with a laugh. Robotnik reared up with a snarl and began banging out his best his controls. Why? Why would you throw your life away for this thing? That's why I don't have any, I only have robots. Never friends, he said. They make you international. A D battery bounced hard off the, do the doctor's head, and Tom turned to see an army of green hills led by Crazy Carl. That's our share of your messing with, Carl cried, and our blue devil, who everyone can see is now a very real creature, who was not in in at all invented by me. The townsfolk circled in, but like a rabid animal, Robotnik wouldn't go down without violence. He slammed and swiveled the controls on his glove, and Tom could hear the egg pod sputtering to life again. Do you think you yokels can stop me? Me? I am authorized by the United States government to annihilate and eliminate any of all, all threats to my investigation, and a much higher power authorizes me to replace each and every one of you with your botnik manifest. A blue blur across Robotnik's face and left him spinning. Sonic the Hedgehog, Tom's friend, was back at full speed and ready to run this creep down. You think you got it all figured out, but you've played yourself, Sonic said to a jeer as he sped from spot to spot, just as head of the eggs pods busted cannons. You thought you could steal a bit of my chaos energies and use it to bend your, the world to your will, but it doesn't work like that. Chaos doesn't get controlled, and neither do I, you buttnik. Stop saying that name. Sonic's quills were charging faster and faster, and his body radiated blue light. Each time Sonic spun around with Robotnik, it almost seemed like his body was morphing into a hot, bright yellow flame. Through the blaze of the energy, Tom spotted the X Factor for the battle across the field and ran to it. Chaos doesn't have to mean destruction, Sonic said, dodging from side to side. I know how it works now. I know what I'm here for. Introduce a little mayhem into life. And the random ride can bring people closer. That's how you make friends. By sticking together. Right, Donut Lord? Tom spun around, the prize in his hand. Sonic had known what he was up to the whole time. The hedgehog could see the big picture after all. Maybe better than he did. You got it, pal, Tom called out. And threw the rain sack back toward his friend. We'll see how much your friends can offer when I am to stick to you in my lab, Robotnik called. Though there was fear in his eyes now. Yeah, that's going to be a hard pass from me, Sonic said. Here's my counter offer. The hedgehog caught the bag, pulled out his last rain, and sped into an electric tornado. From inside, a golden circle rose in the air, revealing in its center a distant planet pipulated with mushrooms. Sonic burst out of his whirlwind, supercharged and with eyes like daggers. He clapped his hands together and a final chaotic burst through the rain, right at Robotnik, eating up the scientist and his cruel machine. A shockwave of blue lightning dissipated in the air, and when the sound of thunder died down, Sonic stood alone in a burned circle of dirt. The hedgehog collapsed. Tom ran to him, crouching low, and picked Sonic's head up. It didn't look like he was breathing. The Blue Devil, is he okay? asked Carl, as the town people rushed to Tom's side. Ma Maddie was soon kneeling next to him with fear in her eyes. He was never a devil, Carl. 
Tom said his name. His name is Sonic, and he was always one of us. But I have much better style than you guys. Sonic coughed hard, and his breathing picked up as to his regular frantic pace. His eyes fluttered open, and the town of Green Hills cheered. That might be, said Tom, but we still need to get you some pants. Chapter 16 It was a rush, a thrill, a rocket ride to their side and back again, and it wasn't going anywhere. Sonic sped through the streets of Green Hills. It was broad daylight, and he could stop anytime he wanted. He spun through the drive through of Burger Princess whenever he wanted a free double checker with cheese. He posted up to Crazy Carl's whenever he needed to borrow something. Not a bear trap in sight. He had regular movie nights of a certain young lady, total casual, mind you. And most of all, he could pop into his best friend's house whenever he wanted. It felt strange still. All those leaks later to be seen, to be known, to be accepted by those people that had watched him from the outside for years. But it was good. He didn't have to hide who he was, and even when it's, he sped, got out of control, and broke slipping in town, the local gym had stocked up on treadmill insurance. Sonic was never afraid of driving anyone anyway. He swung down the road and pulled up to Tom and Maddie's house, but something was off. A large black SUV sat idling in the driveway. Sonic slowed down and quietly zipped his way into the bushes as a man, blocked in, in black, knocked on the door. Tom Wachowski? asked the stern-faced spook. Among other names, Tom said, who wants to know? I'm Agent Stone, Department of Defense Special Branch. Another one of you guys, I hate to tell you, but we had some trouble with the last one. Tom stepped up defensively. Through the bushes, Sonic squeezed his fist, tight in application. That's what I'm here about. I've been tasked with the cleaning up ops of our division, so certain. Its requests don't repeat themselves, said Agent Stone, handling Tom a package. Consider this as an olive branch for keeping certain matters quiet and a promise that it won't be troubled again. I can take a little trouble, Tom said. Speaking of which, did you ever find that trail that robotic guy? I'm sorry. No such person exists? Or has ever existed. Oh, how I wish that were true. You haven't by chance been in contact with a certain alien creature since the incident? The agent asked. Uncle Sam would love to have a chat with him. Very casual. A brunch, maybe. Who, the Blue Devil? As far as I'm concerned, as an urban legend. Very well, Mr. Wachowski, Stone said. But keep the package handy, just in case. Stone's FUV rolled out, and Sonic crept up from his hiding place and into Tom's house. He swung through the kitchen and made himself a bag of popcorn, kicking his feet up on the couch. What the heck, man? cried Tom, coming in from the garage. You didn't knock. I thought you guys night tonight. It's a little late, pal, Tom said. Maybe it's time for you to go back to your cave. Sonic kicked at the floor and shrugged his shoulders. Yeah, cool, I get it. Humans need private time. I'll head out to the hills unless you need me. I didn't mean that cave, said Tom. He led Sonic up the stairs to a door that had been locked for weeks. Figured if I was going to make it make a go in, in the new, more dynamic, less boring version of Green Hills, I'd need to keep my partner within arm's reach. Tom opened the door to the bed, real bedroom. A real one. The walls were hung with all his posters. An old school boombox was propped on a desk. And on a shelf among the wall was, was the last of Long Claw's possessions. Somehow, surveyed from Robotnik's wrecked mobile lab and a familiar face of Surgeon Sprinkles. Dude! cried Sonic. Dude, it can't be real! It's real, Sonic, said Tom. This is home. For both of us. It always has been. I'm just making it official. So no more of the Simon Call of San Francisco? I think that if we're called to action, said Tom, opening the package from Agent Stone, it will come from someplace else. He held out a slick, next-level radio receiver. Sonic took the device in hand. Secret government hotline? He said, way past cool. Life moved pretty fast. But finally, Sonic wasn't alone anymore. And who knew? Maybe he'd get a chance to make even more friends down the road. Epilogue. Far away, the wind howled over the ocean. Storm rackled the cliffs, and the water was rising with the tide. Something big was coming. 
something that no one in this world could ever expect. The wind twisted and turned, picking up leaves and branches in its power. The debris swirled in a small twister, and sparks began to flicker in the air as if by magic. A flash of lightning split in the air in two, and soft feet landed on the ground above the cliff. If these readings are accurate, he's here, said the fox as his two tails twitched in the wind. I found him. I just hope I'm not too late. Worlds away, the heat of the jungle made drew drip of mushroom pads, and a sharp knife of reposted metal cut its way through the brush. Doctor's log, day 45, still marooned, Robotnik recited into the data pad that flickered on his wrist. Behind him, the remainder of his egg pod lurched as is yanked of his vine reins. But thanks to my supreme, intelligent, and spicily formulated mushroom diet, my grasp on Sanami remains absolute. The doctor paused and tilted his wild, hairy head to listen. What's that, Agent Stone? He said to, his, to the toadstool that sat on his machine, its front painted with a sticky pair of sunglasses. Thank you. I like your new look, too. He pressed on the heat over a month and still no signs of an intelligent life on this rock. What bliss. An inhabited planet. No supplies. No apparent way at home. A lesser man would die here, Robotnik said, as he smiled through his mustache. I'll be home by Christmas. This has been a Benjamin Studios production of Sonic the Hedgehog, the official movie novelization by Keel Fedgley, read for you by Stuart Heyman. This book was copyrighted in 2020 by Paramount Pictures and Penguin Random House LLC. Production copyright 2020 by Benjamin Studios Publishers. If you want to know more about Sonic the Hedgehog, you can look it up up on IMDb. There's a real movie. You'll find a wide selection of titles in BenjaminStudios.com. Movies, TV shows, shorts, specials, audiobooks, and books. A bunch of stuff for you to check out and have fun. Even some crafting and recipes. All rights reserved.